The SeekTech ST33QR multi-frequency line transmitter is part of Rigid's state-of-the-art cable and pipe locating system. The ST33QR can energize buried utilities with its direct connect leads, with the optional inductive clamp, or with its built-in inductive antenna. When inducing with its built-in antenna, the ST33QR generates a signal that's up to eight times stronger than typical transmitters. This high inductive output lets you induce more current at lower frequencies for greater distance and less bleed onto adjacent lines. The ST33QR can be powered by D-cell batteries, either alkaline or rechargeable, with an optional AC power adapter, or with the available 18-volt battery pack. The transmitter can produce up to 10 watts of output power when using AC or rechargeable batteries, and up to 5 watts when using alkaline batteries. In this tutorial, we'll take a quick look at the transmitter's features and demonstrate its operation. Before using the equipment, be sure to read the operator's manual. The manual contains important information not covered in this video and will help you get the most out of your equipment. In our first example, we'll demonstrate the conductive or direct connect method of inducing a signal onto a utility. In this method, one of the transmitter's leads is connected to the target utility and the other is connected to the transmitter's ground stake, creating a complete circuit. We'll drive the ground stake in as far as possible and then connect one of the transmitter's leads to it. We recommend always connecting to the ground first as a safety precaution. Next, we'll connect the other lead to our connection point on the target utility. And here's a quick tip. If you can't find a convenient place to clip on, the transmitter's lead clips are equipped with powerful magnets that can hold them securely to the connection point. Our connections have been made, so we'll press the power key to turn the transmitter on. The transmitter is set to 33 kilohertz. We want to use 8 kilohertz, and we'll select that with the frequency key. The transmitter's current output is 100 milliamps, and we can use the up and down arrow keys to increase or decrease the power output. In this case, we'll use 50 milliamps. The transmitter is set up, so we'll power up the receiver. We'll select a line tracing frequency to match the transmitter, and then we'll verify that we're receiving the transmitter signal. We're seeing plenty of signal, so we can locate this line. Next, we'll demonstrate how to energize a line inductively using the transmitter's built-in coil antenna. When switched to inductive mode, the transmitter generates a signal that penetrates the ground and gets onto any metallic lines in the area. To set up for an inductive locate, we'll position the transmitter in line with a suspected path of the buried utility. We'll turn the transmitter on, and then we'll set it to inductive mode, which gives us a choice of 8 or 33 kilohertz. We'll choose 8 kilohertz for this job. The transmitter defaults to 50% power output, which should be adequate for this locate. When locating inductively, the transmitter broadcasts a signal in all directions, and if we're too close to it, the signal broadcast through the air will be much stronger than the signal from the target utility beneath us. This is called air coupling, and it can prevent us from getting an accurate locate. Looking at our SeekTech receiver, we can see that we're getting a strong signal but the elements inside the mapping display are missing. That's because SeekTech receivers hide these elements unless the signal is stronger at the lower antenna than the upper antenna. In this case, the signal is equally strong at both antennas, and the receiver is letting us know that we are severely air coupled by hiding these elements. To minimize air coupling, we'll need to begin our locate some distance away from the transmitter. The distance will vary with each locate scenario, and there are a couple of ways we can test for air coupling before marking the line. We're positioned over the target utility, and the first thing we'll look at is our depth reading. If we raise the receiver by about a foot, our depth reading should increase by the same amount, which it does. Next, we'll focus on the signal strength. If we raise the receiver off the target line, the signal should drop significantly, even if we aim it directly toward the transmitter. In this case, we're confident that we're not air coupled and we can begin our locate. 
The final method we'll demonstrate is energizing a line with the inductive clamp. With the inductive clamp, you can induce a signal onto a conductor when you can't connect to it directly. The clamp plugs into the quarter-inch phone jack located under the rubber cover below the keypad. When we power up the transmitter, it will automatically switch into inductive clamp mode, and we'll have a choice of two frequencies, 8 and 33 kilohertz. In this case, we'll select 8 kilohertz. We'll place the clamp around the target conductor, and make sure that both of the clamp's LEDs are lit. The LEDs tell us that the clamp is receiving a signal from the transmitter, and that its jaws are fully closed. We'll power up the receiver, and verify that its frequency matches the transmitter, and that we're seeing the transmitter signal. In the past few minutes, we've introduced you to the ST33QR transmitter. For additional training, visit SeekTech.com, where you'll find in-depth multimedia tutorials on topics like circuits, grounding, induction, and frequency. On behalf of the entire Rigid SeekTech team, thank you for buying the ST33QR transmitter and thank you for watching this video.